Hey guys, it's going to do right again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also want to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really going to help me in improving this community. And today I'm going to be focusing on more effects for HDRP. The effects that I'm going to be showing you today are going to be one, it's going to be about lighting. The other one, it's going to be about depth of field. And lastly, we're going to be looking at color curves. And if we have some time, we'll look at some additional effects. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to add a couple of more different effects. So the previous video, I show you how we could use procedural sky, vignetting, panini projection, and some other effects. And what I want to do, I want to leave this scene intact, and I actually rename it to example underscore one. The, the reason why I want to do that is because I want to clone the volumes that we created on the previous video and have you check this one out before I make any changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a scene for each video. So even though we already had two videos, that's OK. Just just know that example underscore one is going to be for the two previous videos. So for this video, we're just going to create a new I'm going to create a new sample scene. It's going to be example two. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cloning some things that we're going to need. So let's focus on the project area. Just for a few seconds so the things that i'm going to need for the example two so i'm going to create a new folder and this one's going to be example underscore two and a couple of things that we're going to need is the for sure the post processing profile and also the volume let me click on the on these components just to make sure that okay so we're going to need this one for sure so i'm going to clone that one then i'm going to move that one to example two make sure that i clone the right one Excellent. And now let's click on volumetric fog volume. We're going to click on the profile, and this is the one that we're going to clone. Then we're going to move it also to example two. So now here, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and call this one underscore two, and then I'll do the same, the same with this one underscore two. So just know that anything with underscore two, it's going to be for example example underscore two, and then the same thing for for number one. So. These ones are going to be for number one, so we can we know which ones are for which scene. Okay, so now that we have that created, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the post processing volume on scene on example scene two, and I'm going to associate the the proper volume. So what I'm going to do on this one is we're going to associate the underscore two, which is going to be this one, and also the one for the volumetric fork volume. We're going to do exactly the same thing. All right, now we can save the scene. And, and what I'm going to be doing in this session is show you a couple of more effects. So one thing that I that I want to change in this one is I want to change some of the exposure. I think it's just it's just too strong. And I'm also going to change let's see if we can make the sky just I just want to make it there we go. And I'm also going to remove the the other effect, the grain effect that we did on the volumetric fog volume. So I'm going to remove that. Okay. So we should have something, yeah, there we go, something like that. It's perfect. Let me see if I can change the fog a little bit. There we go. All right. So I think we're good to start with some other effects. So on this one, I'm going to be focusing on adding a few more effects. So let's go ahead and go into post-processing volume. And I'm going to collapse all of this. Let me, let me see how, oh, there we go. I think that I tend to want to change things because I'm not happy with the results. So. <laughs> You'll see that in a lot of the videos that I create. And all right, so now that we have that all changed, we should be able to go back to the previous scene. Let's make sure that we didn't change anything on the previous scene. OK, so that one looks good. And in fact, let's see. In fact, what I'm thinking on, on these ones, I think we could rename them. So this one is going to be for video one and two. And then this one is going to be for video three. I think that's going to make it easier for anybody that is watching this and, and wants to go into a specific video. And then I'm just going to rename this folder one underscore two. Just know that that's for the first two videos. And then this one is going to be for video underscore three. All right. So now we should be in video underscore three. Excellent. So what I'm going to be doing is let's go into post processing volume. I think we, we got everything prepped that we needed. Just resize this a tiny bit. 
Okay, excellent. And in fact, let me move the camera just a tiny bit more. Let's see, on the X axis, so everything is aligned. All right, I think we're good. Let me just move it a tiny bit more. There we go. Okay, so I think I'm happy with how that looks. All right, so now let's go back into post-processing volume where we started. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how we can add another component, which is under lighting. So if we click on override, go to lighting, and we're gonna click on indirect lighting controller. So so with this with this component, you can basically override the lighting. So I can go in and, and check indirect diffuse intensity. You can see that I can, I can now control the intensity on the 3D model itself. So if I wanted to, you know, add another override, I could say, well, maybe I want this to be much, you know, much brighter. I can also do the same thing with the specular. And the specular is gonna be really hard to see. So, because this one doesn't have that option, the materials don't, so we can just ignore that one. Just know that this one, it's gonna help us with overriding some of the lighting. And I think 2.772 works. So that's what indirect lighting does. It's, a, it's another component. And then if we go into out of a right, let's go into also post-processing and we can look at how the color curves work. So in this one, you get kind of get a, a curve just like the component states. And we can go into either, you know, overwrite the master. We can go, I don't believe the, I think we can, let me see. Yeah, I don't believe we can overwrite the, let's see if I can add a component, a key. Oh, we can do a master override of the whole thing, which is actually cool. I normally do the red, green, or blue. And so by right clicking on this area, you can add a key at the position, you can add a key on the curve. So if I wanted to say maybe, you know, I also want to modify this, it actually gives it a really cool look. Then I can add another key right here at that position. And we can see how that is affecting the scene. And we can do, let's see. I think something like that. So you can kind of see how we get some really crazy effects just by modifying some of the curves. Okay, we can also do the same thing with, if we wanted to go to red, green, or, or blue, you can also do the hue value and the saturation illumination. So let's try this one and see, and add a key at position. And let's see, and we need to click on Override. So remember that we need to click on that as soon as you do your selection. And you can see that we can also get some really crazy effects with this. So I'm just gonna undo that and remove the Override. I'm gonna leave the default. Let's go into, let's go into blue and see what that gives us. And also let's click on Override so that we can override the curve, a key, and you can see that you know, I can make it more blue, give it more blue color. So that, that actually gives it a really crazy look. So you can kind of see how you can get some, some really cool effects on the on the graphics. And if I go, there we go. Say I wanted to do something like that. So I'm gonna uncheck it because I don't think I, I wanna I wanna mess with it. So that's what color curves do. The, the last one that I wanna show you is the, for this video, it's gonna be the depth of fill. And this one is one that I, I really like. And if you enable focus mode, you can select either using the physical camera to determine the depth of fill, or you can do manual. I'm gonna do manual for this. And you can kinda see if I uncheck this, it's we're already getting some blur on the, on the front of the vehicle. So, but the other thing that I can also do is I can modify the star. So let's say that I wanted to star. See, I can change, let me go back here. And also do the end. So if we go back, there we go. So you can see, you can see that the back part, it's changing. So it's getting blur right in the back. And let me get closer on the end. There we go. So let's get to lower numbers on these two sides and then you can kind of, so if I wanted to, if I wanted just to focus on the front area of the vehicle, maybe around that area and then leave all of that blur, then that really gives it a really cool look. The other thing that we can do, we can get, we can get a little closer on the camera. We can either change the field of view or we can move the camera towards the car. So I'm just gonna, we just go to isometric, it's gonna be easier for me to move it and get closer to the car so we can see 
we can see what is happening. Let's go back into the post processing. And now we can see, there we go. So that it's giving us a little, little blur in the end. See how that is. Okay, there we go. And okay, I think I, I think I like that. If we had some other objects on the back, you could probably, it will be a lot easier to see, but you can kind of see right here on the back of the car that we're getting, that we're getting some blur. You could also create a component here, just a 3D, a 3D cube. And we can probably place it right on the back of the car, right here. We can pretend that that is going to be, let's see, let me just kill that, let me just kill that up. And we can probably just resize it. I think it's just too big. And I'm going to go into perspective. And we can get closer so we can see what we're doing. And the other thing, I can just scale this, rotate it, and let me change the axis to global so it's easier for us to move it. And in fact, we can just make it, we can just probably make it bigger. Just add a wall on the back. You can kind of see that it gives us a better look of what is getting blur. Just kind of align it here. And there we go. And this is completely cricket, so that's okay. We'll fix it. And let me just go a little bit to the left, to the right, and resize it. And resize it there. Let me make it bigger. There we go. Something like that. I think that that works. I just wanted to show you how how the back part of the car is getting blur. And in fact, we can go back into the camera, and I'm gonna go out a little bit back. There we go. And this guy. Okay. So let's do. Let's have one right there. And honestly, I don't know what these these are. These are just for demonstration purposes. I can just make him smaller, and then, there we go, something like that. Let's make him a little thicker. I think that, I think that works. So, let's just call these, so this is a fence, and we'll call both of them the same way, and then move them up. And now we need to change, because we changed the camera, it basically is blurring half of the car. So we can go back into the post-processing and then just make some changes to the end. So, so if I go all the way back, you can see there's no blur, right? Oops, let me go back here and just set it right about there. And that gives us a little bit of blur right there and then we're basically getting some blur right here. So that's really everything that I wanted to show you guys on this video. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers. If you're starting out or if you're an advanced game developer, that will be a good site for you. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon page where I'm posting early access to source code and also information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you, guys.